Missed just three days ago to these fighting right. tonight, and here's a fellow who hasn't fought in nearly a year. That may be trouble. That's right. He's been plagued by a few injuries. He had some cartilage, or I should say some calcium deposits mm -hmm. on his knuckles. That kept him out for a while. Uh, he says he's in good shape, but he's got his hands full with Gerald McClellan tonight. A real, real top-notch prospect in the middleweight division. All right. McClellan is the WBO middleweight champ. This is a non-title fight tonight, but he won the championship by knocking down John the Beast Mugabe last November three right. times in the first round. So McClellan certainly has firepower. Right. Uh, he's knocked out, like I said, 22 opponents. Of course, a lot of people might make the case that uh, Mugabe was a little over the hill. Of course, Terry Norris had knocked him out at junior middleweight in the first round also. But uh, nonetheless, uh, uh, Emmanuel Stewart says this kid really has a lot of talent. He and Roy Jones and a few other middleweights are going to be the future of the middleweight division. Okay, let us start as usual with our Goosen's Corner feature, an inside look at the boxers, and let's begin with Carl Sullivan. Right. Carl Sullivan, a, a fine gentleman, too. Uh, we talked to him today, and uh, he says he's in tremendous shape, but he's going to probably have to shake loose a lot of ring rust. He hasn't fought in over 330 days, so he's got to use a lot of lateral movement, irregardless of what shape he's in. Use his reach, even though he says it's a 77-inch reach, McClellan says he has a 79-inch reach. He's got a box. That's what he's got to do with McClellan, because McClellan is a tough come-in brawler. And there's Carl Sullivan, comes with the nickname the Irish Assassin, only because of the name Sullivan, nothing else. Native of Pittsburgh, 12-4 and four record with eight knockouts. But the thing to watch with Carl is that three of his uh, last four fights ended in losses, and he lost those three by knockouts. So he is certainly not a hot boxer as he enters the ring against Gerald McClellan. And Joe Goosen's corner on McClellan. Well, Gerald McClellan, who uh, really wasn't anticipating fighting um, Sullivan tonight, but was in, in training camp anyway, he's got to start quickly. Of course, that's been, his, uh, that's been his thing to do in the past. That's why he has so many knockouts in under three rounds. And he's got to pressure Sullivan here, hopefully catch him cold with a little of that rust on him, and take him out early. And Gerald McClellan from Freeport, Illinois, now wearing the gold colors of the Kronk Gym in Detroit, comes in 24-2 and two with 22 knockouts. And if you like to keep track of statistics all 22 of those KOs have come inside three rounds so don't blink when it comes to Gerald McClellan and our tale of the tape for our first fight this evening at the Trump Taj Mahal in Atlantic City Carl Sullivan Gerald McClellan Sullivan a year older McClellan claims to be 6-1 and Sullivan thought he had a great reach at 77 but McClellan <laughs> checks in at 79 inches so Sullivan may be in for a surprise and as you look at McClellan uh, right now, he is rather tall and rather long. Our New Jersey State rules, Joe, a 10-point must system, standing eight count is in effect, as is the three knockdown rule. You cannot be saved by the bell in any of the 10 rounds this evening, and the doctor or referee can stop the fight. Right now, let's go up to ring announcer Michael Buffer for the pre-fight introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to the Trump Taj Mahal here on the boardwalk in Atlantic City, New Jersey, where tonight, main events in association with TVKO, along with the undisputed, undefeated King of Beer, Budweiser, presents professional boxing for your entertainment. All the bouts tonight are sanctioned by the New Jersey State Athletic Control Board. The officials assigned as judges to this first bout will be Frank Brunette. Gene Williams and Richard Strange. And when the bell rings, the man in charge of the action, referee Tony Perez. And now, ladies and gentlemen, this bout scheduled for 10 rounds in the middleweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. He's wearing the emerald green with black colors, weighing in at 162 pounds from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. His professional record, 12 victories with eight KOs against only four defeats Ladies and gentlemen, the Irish assassin, Carl Sullivan. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, wearing the Kronk gold and weighing in at 164 pounds from the Motor City, Detroit, Michigan. His record, 24 victories with 22 KOs, only two defeats. He currently holds the WBO middleweight title, title not on the line tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, the G-Man, Gerald McClellan. I've already been giving you instruction in the dressing room. Give me a good clean fight and I will not bother neither one of you. Two things you must remember. Obey my commands and protect yourself at all times. Check hands and good luck to the boss. All right, so middleweights scheduled for 10. Look at the difference in first round knockouts as we mentioned. 
McClellan can do it quickly, and here they come. McClellan in the gold, Sullivan in the green. McClellan certainly looks taller, but 6-1, we're not sure about. Well, he certainly looks taller, and he certainly looks like he has a longer reach, too. That's evidence in that. Jab, yeah. right, in those three jabs right off the bat. Another Ooh. good jab from McClellan. Put it up. Sullivan missing with the right. And again, snapping the head back of Sullivan. McClellan does with the jabs. Boy, the more we talk to him. Oh, the right hand staggers him. And another one, and down he goes. Fight's over. That's it. 40 seconds into the fight, Gerald McClellan with the first hard punch he landed. Virtually ended it at that point. Beautiful, really beautiful setup by uh, Gerald McClellan. He set him up with those long, quick jabs, stood him up against the ropes, dropped a sharp right hand right on the button, and, and now you see why he's got 23 knockouts now. He is a sharp, sharp puncher. Looks like this kid could go a long way. Sullivan's corner asking Tony Perez why he stopped it so quickly. Well, we'll see Here we why go. in the replay. Here we go. He, he just touches him with Ooh. that jab and bingo, right on the chin, and the mouthpiece almost comes out. His eyes really went in four different directions here. Here's another overhead view here. This, this is earlier in the round when he, he first landed, the McClellan first landed those solid jabs, backing up uh, Carl Sullivan. And Sullivan really never got a chance to get on track here. Bingo. Oh, right on the side of the chin. And you can see him doing the funky chicken right there. He gets clipped with another right hand, and he's out. There's no sense in even counting or uh, let him have another chance. Joe, I saw out. you wave Brennan. to me after the first punch that you thought it was over. I saw his eyes light up. They rolled back like a couple of slot machine numbers right there. And, you know, that's a telltale okay. sign when, when you see those eyes go like that. They're pretty much out cold on their feet. The doctors were checking Sullivan as he sat on the stool. Now he is up and, uh, and shifting his feet. But we had mentioned about the early firepower of Gerald McClellan. You saw it quickly there. But, of course, we also mentioned the fact that Carl Sullivan had not fought in nearly a year and had lost three of his last four. So I think the setup for both fighters was very accurate. And McClellan taking out Sullivan just 40 seconds into the first round, unofficially. And that may be a TVKO record. In fact, I'm sure it is. And I'm told, by the way, that uh, McClellan threw 15 punches, landed 11. Sullivan threw two punches, landed neither. And the CompuBox people who have been uh, doing this the last several years say this is the only the second time in their history that there's been a shutout. Sullivan was 0 for 2, throwing punches in the fight. Uh, how'd you score that one, Bert Sugar? Bert Sugar is with us tonight, everyone, from Boxing Illustrated. He was going to be our uh, unofficial scorekeeper and judge with us. And, uh, the minute you <laughs> asked me I was going to do Gerald McClellan, I knew that this was not going to be a tough fight to judge. I mean, he's taken out, what, nine or ten men in the first round, and he was fighting a man who had not fought in a while. Yeah. I just figured I'm not going to get a real chance here, Len, to explain the daggone thing because it's going to be over. All right, uh, leave the pen in your pocket. All right, let's uh, <laughs> let's uh, check out Michael Buffer, who ha has the official announcement for us now. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Tony Perez steps in to stop this bout. 45 seconds into the very first round, the winner by TKO, the G-Man from the Motor City, Gerald McClellan. So the official time, 45 seconds of the first round, and if we get a couple of more like these, Bert, we'll all go home early. You know, to check the official statistics, that is the 16th first round knockout in Gerald McClellan's career, and this was only his 27th fight. So this is a boxer you'll be hearing about. Let's send it back into the ring and my partner, Joe Goosen. All right, I got to clear up something real quick with Len Berman. Gerald, how tall are you? Six even. All right, six even. We had you listed at 6-1. Okay. Tony Alla Sr. there standing next to you. Now, let me ask you, uh, Gerald, was it, was it supposed to be this easy for you tonight? Well, I, like I told you uh, in my room, I was going to take my time and box, work the jab up and down, and I find an opening somewhere, and opening came. I went for it. You were hitting him with that jab at surprisingly, uh, if, if, you know, with if, if very little effort, and everything you were throwing seemed to land on him. Well, I, I worked on my jab a lot, you know, on a heavy bag, trying to master it up and down, hook off the jab, and it worked for me. Did you know when you hit him with that right hand he wasn't getting up? 
Well, I was just telling Emmanuel I have a tendency every time I land a right hand on the chin, I turn and walk before the opponent falls because, you know, I'm confident in it. So, but I came back and jumped on him. Mm -hmm. uh, now, obviously, I know Emmanuel would like to move you up in some competition. Uh, of course, you, you've had your share of real good competition. What would be the next step that you would like to take in the middleweight division? Well, I'll lead it up to Emmanuel. You know, whatever Emmanuel put together, I'll take. But uh, it's a lot of middleweights out there. I would never pick no name because, you know, no grudge match, you know, I got on my mind. But one guy I would like to challenge is always calling me out is James Tony. And I think uh, he watching this fight, and uh, I hope he give me a chance to fight for his IBF title. Mm -hmm. uh, let me bring Emmanuel Stewart in here, Gerald's trainer. Emmanuel, now, uh, Gerald brought up the name uh, James Tony. Of course, he's booked for the next few months. But have you had any uh, sort of talk with him? Well, I've already spoke to Bob Arum, and he has expressed a great interest in having Gerald fight the winner of the Mike McCallum James Tony match and we don't know who's going to win that because Mike couldn't possibly win that mm -hmm. but we are very interested in fighting the winner I think that uh, Gerald is definitely I think one of the best middleweights in the world right now that's right you certainly looked at it did you get hit with anything tonight well, I got hit with a um, either right hand or a hook caught me across the top of my eye it stings a little bit but you know wasn't much all right, well, listen, it was a beautiful effort. It didn't last too long. I wish we could have seen a little bit more of you, but uh, I'm sure we will next time out. Emmanuel, Gerald, congratulations. Yes, I'd like to say um, hello to my family and friends in Freeport, Illinois, and uh, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and Erie, Pennsylvania. And this fight goes out to my uh, friend Lanny, couldn't make it tonight, and my homeboy Baldy back in Freeport. All right, congratulations again. Len, we're going to send it back to you ringside now. All right, thank you, Joe. So uh, Gerald is overruling the CompuBox guys, and uh, he's saying that he got hit with one punch. So it was uh, not officially a shutout, at least according to uh, oh, the CompuBox guy said it was an elbow. It wasn't a punch. Uh, they're, they're covering themselves at all times. All right, let's take a, another look at what transpired here in just the opening seconds of the first round. And for what it's worth, it is a TV KO record. 45 seconds of the first round. McClellan, we noted the jabs that snapped back the head of Carl Sullivan, and then that right hand. At that point, Joe Goosen waved to me, it was over. Tony Perez allowed this one punch, uh, the second one over the top, which didn't do any damage, and then Tony Perez stepped in to end it, officially at 45 seconds. Here is the overhead view, one of the sharpest right hands that, that we have seen in our year plus of TVKO boxing, and uh, Gerald McClellan, perhaps a force to be reckoned with. Emmanuel Stewart was telling us earlier that he felt that McClellan and Olympian Roy Jones would mean to the 90s what uh, Leonard and Hagler uh, meant to the uh, 80s. Now, if that happens, that remains to be seen, but uh, certainly uh, McClellan very impressive in his first round knockout here this evening on TVKO in Atlantic City. So that's the ringside story on our first bout. Don't go away, lots more to come. Now let's go back to our host, Cambrell Marshall. Thank you very much, Lynn Berman. A reminder that the Burt Cooper, certainly Gerald McClellan with an impressive performance here tonight, 40-second knockout. He says James Tony would like to get him, too, down the road, and that would be a matchup of the hometown boys from Detroit. Have to sell a lot of tickets to see that one come off, but he says he'll want to get uh, James